Our dream has always been to have multiple transition homes. Now whether that was feasible or not, we weren't sure. Uh, we took the approach, we want to get one up and running. We want to show people this model will work. We want to show people that it can make a difference. Making a difference began six years ago with six people who had seen these faces. When we saw the kids the first time, uh, they were, it was almost hopeless. It, it was a different feeling of despair because you could walk into a room, you could see one child pick them up, hold them, and you felt like you might be making a difference just, just by touching. But then when you open the door, there's just row after row of bed. And what simply was one child in your arms turned into hundreds right in front of you, and it, it just felt helpless. Um, as you walk down the halls and then it was room after room. So it was an overwhelming feeling of helplessness. And even if we could do something, could we really make a difference? And quite honestly, I didn't believe we could at first. You know, I'm the one that said we're six people around a kitchen table. This will never fly. This will never fly. And uh, I've forgotten that seventh person that was at the table. You know, God was in this ministry from the very beginning. Had to be because we're the most unlikely or let me put it this way, I am the most unlikely person to be involved in this. Um, it has to be, it has to be God's ministry. Hopeful Hearts was born, first giving aid and comfort to nearly 2,000 orphans, babies to teenagers. The main bulk of what we do in the orphanages now is life necessities, food, supplementing their food budget, uh, cleaning supplies, medicine, uh, personal hygiene supplies, clothing, shoes, the necessities that the kids need. They understand why when we're there, why we're there, because they know that uh, Hopeful Hearts is responsible for a lot of things that happen. Oh, in the orphanages, the, the difference is night and day. Um, there's still no place I'd want to live, most of them, especially the older kids' orphanages. There's just a limit to what we can do to 35,000 square feet of concrete with 350 filthy children running through it every day. But we just got, this last week, we just put heaters in the bedrooms of Gardetskia. They have a hot water heat system that didn't have enough water pressure, they weren't getting any heat on the second and third floor, and we did blessing bags with our coats on and the little children with their hands red from the cold and their knuckles cracked and cold water and cold. So we did the infrared heaters and put those in each of their sleeping rooms just this last week since we were there at Christmas. The baby house is bright, you know, it's cheerful now, it's got color, it's, it's clean, it, it, you don't feel like you're walking into a dungeon when you go in. Stroganovka, for the first time in 27 years, has new linoleum on the floor and, and new furniture for the kids and tables and chairs and new beds and mattresses. We always said these girls will probably be under our care anywhere from two to four years. I mean, transitioning into society is a long process. Um, they've never held a job. Um, they've never really attended school regularly. But we do have our first young lady right now that is finishing up her technical training and she is working um, and earning a living, starting to support herself. They've never had a family or had anybody that they could depend on before. And now they know that that we'll be back and that Hopeful Hearts is there, just they have a very large family, <laughs> the Ukrainian side and the American side. It takes um, about 12 to maybe $1,800 a month for each house. Groceries, clothing, food, cleaning supplies, the same there as here. Uh, every penny that's necessary to run a home is what, what we have to pay for their health care, uh, if they've got a dental problem, a medical problem, whatever they need, clothes, um, you know, new, new school clothes, school supplies, all of those things. There are lots of things going on that point to the fact that hopefully this coming year we'll be able to have a third one going. And a lot depends on the generosity of our donors. We will never turn our back on the children in the orphanages. We've spent the first five years really working in those orphanages to, to bring up their quality of life, which I think is important. And we will never let those little people go hungry. They will always have the warm clothes and shoes and the medicine that they need. 
but the medicine, the food, the clothes will always be there for the little people as well. And this year, Hopeful Hearts guided some of God's goodness toward children in Afghanistan. And now Afghanistan. Well, we are working through, it's called the Ashiana School. It is a school for about 500 refugee and displaced children. Uh, not all of them are orphans, necessarily. Some of them may have a family member or, but they're street children that have been displaced, homeless children in Afghanistan. This was a school that Sozo International started for them. Um, and we are now going in and we provide one hot meal a day uh, to the tune of about $900 a month to feed 500 children one hot meal a day. Uh, but for most of them, it's their only meal. It's not one hot meal, it is the hot meal of the day. Um, we've done school supplies for, that, for the school. Uh, every winter for the last couple of years, we've been doing new winter coats and shoes and socks for the children. Their, their climate is very similar to ours, but much more extreme. Mm -hmm. Much, much hotter in the summer and much, much colder in the winter. And Bob would bring home these pictures of these beautiful little girls, tiny little feet in jellies with no socks in this much snow. And so we're doing winter coats, shoes, socks. I think as a board, we kind of look at this, this Afghanistan as almost our tithe of what's been given to us to use. It will never be the focus of the Ukrainians. Um, but we were shown this need. For some reason, God, God gave us the ability to meet this need. And we kind of feel like it's our way of saying thank you and reaching outside of ourselves to do something for somebody else. All this compassion, the outpouring of love and financial support, the promise of a bright future. The girls in the Ukrainian transitional houses wanted an answer to a perfectly reasonable question. And they finally said to us, they said, I want to ask you something. I said, okay, you can ask me anything. And they said, people are wanting to know and we feel like we need to know. You're not doing this for us for nothing. What are you going to expect us to do for you? What, what is the payment at the end of this going to be? There's no way you're doing this for nothing. You're going to want something from us. And, and we think, you know, we want to know what that is. And it kind of struck me funny, but I didn't laugh. And I said, well, I said, they're exactly right. I said, we do want something from you. And I am expecting to be paid in full for what we've done for you. I said, you know, nothing in life is free and you are going to have some responsibilities back to us. And I went on and on and their eyes just kept getting bigger and bigger. And finally I said, okay, here's what I want. I want you to promise me, this is the first thing, that when you do meet that fine young man that God has picked out for you, that you won't marry unless I can be here. I want your children to know my name and I want to be a grandmother to them. I want to help you shop for the prettiest wedding dress that Simferopol has ever sold. I said, I want to be here when your children are born. I want to be a part of your life. I want to visit your church with you someday. I said, that will be your payment back to me. Well, the kitchen got real quiet and then it just erupted. They were so excited and they said, that can't, I said, that is it. All I want for you are the things that I want for my children. I want a home. I want a fine Christian husband for you. I want a job. I want children that you can raise up and nurture and love. And when you do that, I'll be paid back in full for what we've done.